friends, welcome to this special micro symposium in honor of Bill Duax. You all know Bill Duax. There are several speakers, so we will try to be brief. <clears throat> I'm going to be very brief on this, but <clears throat> Bill, as you all know, you are a colleague with a ball of energy who gets everyone enthused, who makes work seem cheery, whose charm is unmatched, who carries a passionate demeanor, who has dreams to accomplish much, whose ambitions never waver, who rubs off positivity to everyone else on the way we all gather with you. So we want, you know, there are several speakers in addition to this, there are others. We wish you well and a big thank you for all the good work that you have done for UCR and the Christotherapy community in the world. Just a brief what, you know, you all know about India, what all the great scientists and writers have done about India. And we are so happy that we have gathered here today to honor Bill Duax for all his services. Mahatma Gandhi said, I do not want my house to be walled in all sides and my windows to be closed. Instead, I want the cultures of all lands to be blown about my house as freely as possible, but I refuse to be blown off my feet by any. Today, you can see we have met here from 71 countries, and the winds of all the countries are blowing on India today. And on this day, we have a special tribute to build your acts. Now, I briefly want to touch upon his childhood education, and here you are going his photographs of the parents and the date of birth, place of birth, and where he had his education in Iowa, and then he also had an honorary doctor of science from Poland. And you can see the young Bill, his grandfather carrying Bill Duax. <laughs> and uh, this is his grandfather, Theophil Duax. As you can see that that's a French spelling that we designed to speak both in French. <laughs> and these are Bill's own words about his childhood, K-12, the college, and also the U.S. Army. And this is the Bill's house. There have been bees in Bill's bedroom and the outdoor toilet. And the Bill is a grade school boy. <laughs> and this is Father Bill Duax. <laughs> and these are the photographs of the boys in the convent. And these are the brothers and sisters. <laughs> <laughs> and this is news about the Bill Duax being elected as a student council president when he was a student. And these are the Bill's family bonds. You can see his wife, children, and the grandchildren, and the mother. And these are the Bill's children with Nobel laureate Dorothy Hodgkin. And this is the 40th wedding anniversary retreat of Bill Duax. And this is the same retreat. Just <laughs> 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 
ask. And you can speak. The questionable man spends 4th of July on Lake Erie. <laughs> Sincerity, dedication to teaching crystallography and the thought of integrity, commitment, dedication, teaching and training high school students at the Hoffman Woodward Research Institute in Buffalo, leader and promoter of talents and youth and research, of inspiring scientists in the land of thousand crystallographers and around the globe and of several fields in the cradle of crystal structures, grandfather of legend, great grandfather of tradition of wonderful purity, childlike, and profoundly stubborn with the molding antiquities of the rest of the scientists. The one soul at the sun that is endowed with an imperishable interest for crystal lovers and canoe years, for and ignorant, wise and fool, 
rich and poor, bond and free, the one man that all people desired to see and interact. And this is the crystal packing. <laughs> and you may all know, this is the 1900 Bill's great grandfather, he had 25 colonies of honey bees in Wisconsin. Therefore, Bill also has a special interest in making honey from the bees. And this is the fourth generation of beekeepers. And you can see Bill Duax. <laughs> and this is Bill again. And that is the Duax honey that is sold. So. <laughs> And also you see Bill and Catherine Duyak with Hillary Clinton in Buffalo. And this is his famous somersault. And this was done recently. Can you play the video? And that was done last month. Finally, that's for me. Namaste, that's Bill Duax again. Thank you very much. With that introduction, now I request Dr. Gautam Des Raju, who is a past president by UCR, and also he's the current organizer. You all know him, and he'd like to say a few words. Thank you, Rao. Great pleasure <clears throat> to be here this afternoon to acknowledge the contribution of our friend and colleague, Bill Duax. At an appropriate occasion, the IUCR Congress in India. It's not my intent to repeat what Rao has said, and I will be necessarily brief, but uh, when I think of Bill and my association with him over the last several decades, I would say that here is a real humane person. I think uh, Rao, he summarizes very well. Gandhiji's quotation about a house where all the windows are open and where all the breezes are allowed to blow in and out. But the person himself will never get blown away by any of these breezes. And I feel that Gandhiji might well have been talking about Bill when he spoke about India. And, of course, he's been here many times. And uh, here is a photo of him in India taken yesterday. <laughs> and he's wearing one of his usual dress forms, I would say. <laughs> I, I, I hate, you know, becoming maudlin and, you know, speaking about, you know, my personal associations, but I cannot resist telling you this that on his very first visit to Hyderabad, because I was here for many years, as most of you know, I and my wife Krishna took him to a shop where he wanted to buy a necktie. And uh, it was a particularly lurid yellow color. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I looked at it, and my wife Krishna, whom some of you might meet tomorrow, challenged him to buy it. And uh, not only did he buy it, but he kept wearing it every time he came to see me after that. <laughs> <laughs> and so the first thing I asked him when I saw him in Hyderabad a few years ago was, <laughs> Bill, and then he knew my question. He said, no, I brought the tie and I'm going to wear it. <laughs> there is the tie. <laughs> so I couldn't resist, although it's been hidden <laughs> by this dress, which has come from some other part of the world, which he has visited, and he has visited many parts of this world. 
And uh, as I said, I shall not be very long. And Rao has mentioned Mark Twain. I don't know how many of you know the other statement that Mark Twain made about India. He traveled around the whole world. And uh, when he went back, they asked him about India. And he said that I've seen a lot of shows in my life. And uh, it's all been good fun. But he said, if I could just see five minutes of the Indian show again, I'd give up all the other shows that I've seen in my life. And I think that sort of summarizes Bill, actually. We've all seen many shows in our life. But this one show, I think I would perhaps give up all the other shows I've seen just to see this one show again for five minutes. And so in many senses, and I think that's probably the reason why I like Bill so much, because I am very fond of my country. And I've shown you that he reminds me of my own country in, this, in these funny ways. And so, Bill, it's a great pleasure for me as the chairman of the local organizing committee of this IUCR Congress, which is being held in India, that uh, I'm able to give you in India this token of our appreciation from the LOC. And uh, with all our very good wishes, and I hope that you have a long and happy and healthy life. Thank you very much. Thank you. There is nothing, there can be nothing in here that I will value more than your remarks. <laughs> I, I do not belong in the same sentence with Mark Twain and Gandhi. <laughs> it is really humbling. <laughs> The next speaker for this afternoon is going to be Susan Catherine Byram from United States. She, everybody knows. When you say broker in the U.S., that is so. <laughs> she is going to be talking about honoring Dr. William Bill du William Duax, representing crystallographers in industry. This is very exciting for me to be here. I am so grateful for your invitation, Rao, for asking me to come. It's uh, my first trip to India and a really special opportunity, although it is my 12th IUCR meeting. Um, so we are here to honor Bill, our good friend. He is, as we've just heard from Rao, a distinguished scientist in his own right. Over 285 scientific papers countless oral presentations, abstracts, uh, book chapters, et cetera, et cetera, continuing to guide the Hauptmann Woodward Nobel Institute in Buffalo as research director, as the executive vice president of research and member of its scientific governance council today. So he's, he's a big guy. He's a wonderful scientist. He says good things, but even more important, I think, in this room today is his not noteworthy service to the American Crystallographic Association and the wider crystallographic community around the world. So I think that he's contributed to crystallography so, so much to all of us in this room. 45 ACA meetings attended to date, president, in 1986, chief executive officer from 1987 to the present. How could you have stood all of us this long, Bill? Amazing. Because of Marsha Bear. <laughs> there you go. IUCR meetings attended, 15 to date. Commission on Small Molecules, chair of the Commission on Small Molecules, chair of the IUCR Seattle meeting, the last time we were in the US in 96, executive committee member, 
president of the IUCR, and immediate past president. Pretty impressive. But he had a vision. He continues to have a vision. And that's for the future of crystallography worldwide. Embracing developing countries, the ones that aren't in red yet. Oh, where's my, where's my beam? There it is. So we all know Bill wants more African, more Latin American countries, more Asian countries to come into the fold. And he's mentored many people personally, some of you in this room. Big deal, founding editor of the IUCR newsletter. Bill told me that this was uh, because of a call from Professor Andre Otier, getting him involved to do this, and lo, these many years later, having gone through all these issues from 1993, the Beijing China edition, to 2017, the Hyderabad India edition and all the many things in between. Every newsletter involved Bill. He was either the editor from 1993 to 2002, or he was the president and writing the letter from the president, and then he went back to being the editor again. Every one of them has his fingerprints on it. He had a little help, of course, from his friends. Judy Flippin Anderson, Jane Griffin, Patty Coley Potter, but it's Bill that had the vision. So I decided that I was gonna read all these words from Bill in the IUCR newsletter, and instead of me talking about what Bill said, I would let Bill talk about Bill. So there's a set of themes that have come through in the IUCR newsletter. First of all, emerging nations and the future of crystallography. Look back, 2003. It is my opinion, the greatest strength of the IUCR in the next 50 years will come from emerging nations in South America, Africa, and Asia. Natural resources, new ideas, bright young people. 2016, I've attended 15 IUCR Congresses 14 Asian crystallographic association meetings, 20 European crystallographic meetings, 45 American crystallographic meetings. I've witnessed the formation of the Latin American crystallographic association. But the first pan-African crystallographic meeting in Cameroon in 2016 was the most educational, exciting, and enjoyable meeting of my life. May I paraphrase, to date. Perhaps there's more. So here's another theme coming. International communication and cooperation. This is Bill to the very core. 2003, he declared this, and I think it's even more critical today. International communication and cooperation, fostered by organizations such as the IUCR, are the best tools with which to combat terrorism, ignorance, and intolerance. We can all stand up and cheer for that. Look at that picture. It says, no racism? What's Bill wearing today? That same button. It's always the theme. Here he is, all around the world, proclaiming that theme. Another theme, women in science. Now, Bill was there long before the General Assembly passed this new resolution only two days ago. Volume in 2000 was dedicated to women in science and crystallography. Here's our role models, Ada Yonath, Nobel Prize winner, Dorothy Crowfoot Hodgkin, Nobel Prize winner, Eleanor Dodson with Dorothy and Bill, Jenny Glusker, the person that Bill calls his good angel. Keeps you out of trouble, right? <laughs> volume 13, volume 24, Bill, never one to step aside from controversy, calls the IUCR to action. The composition of the executive committee has never had female representation, commensurate with the percentage of women in crystallography. Perhaps the delegates to Congress could develop a policy 
that would assure gender balance on the executive committee, its delegations, and commissions. And what did we do this week? That very thing. Bill's support of industrial crystallographers, dear to my heart, of course. Bill embraces all crystallographers as legitimate scientists, even those of us who are not in academia. And this is really, really wonderful. Once again, he encourages people to participate in meetings and present real scientific talks and real tech posters. Thank you. Volume one, number one, 1993. Bill reminded IUCR members there would be no IUCR newsletter without advertisers and encourages members to embrace them. In my own personal experiences at many crystallographic meetings, Bill always reached out to the exhibitors and made us not only feel welcome, but essential. Thanks, Bill. Bill makes meetings friendly and fun. We saw those somersaults, right? But Bill connects us all to one another by writing, by talking, by taking photos. How many thousands of those photos in the IUCR gallery archives are Bill's own photos? He photographs special people, special moments, and put them in that CD laboriously produced by that team in Buffalo, right? I have that CD. That's a picture of my CD. But most of all, we love Bill because he makes meetings fun. What's that? Cristal beer in Cuba, yeah? He makes meetings fun, and we want to come back. How important that is to first-time attendees at a meeting for somebody to come up and welcome them and talk to them and say, you're important here. So here's Bill, mentoring young scientists. He has a unique Hauptmann Woodward summer program running up until last Friday, I think, for this year. Bill's, this is a picture of Bill's current class. Here's Bill hanging around on the table there, inspiring his group. And indeed, with this same um, group, he uh, presented this wonderful project of bioinformatics analysis of ribosomal proteins, and they won a $5,000 grant to help carry the program on and mentor new young students from the local high schools. What a wonderful opportunity for these high school kids, huh? Bill also <coughs> understands that if we're to fund our science, it's good if the public supports it. And so Bill has uh, had some notable symposia to bring the public interest towards our science. And one of the easy ways, in a way, for the public to understand crystallography is to think Nobel Prizes. We have a lot of Nobel Prize winners. In fact, we have a wonderful flyer at the back of the room on the Nobel Prize winners in crystallography. And we hope all the students here will take lots of those flyers and take them home to their uh, institutes. So these symposia put together by Bill or facilitated by Bill um, really have made a difference in the public perception and in the attendance at some of our crystallographic meetings. Here's Herb Hauptmann's very own Nobel Prize displayed in the lobby of the Hauptmann Woodward Institute. That's pretty special to be able to walk into the lobby and see a real Nobel Prize. Um, there was a wonderful symposium, which I was lucky enough to attend in 1986 at the ACA meeting, in which Herb Hauptmann, Jerome Carl, and Linus Pauling all spoke, and brilliantly chosen in what? HKL order. Amazing. I mean, how else would you choose which person to go first? Then in 1988, Six Nobel laureates drew a meeting attendance that was double from the previous year because people, including us, were excited. And then 96 Seattle meeting, another Nobel panel. So you can see Bill's fingerprints. There's Bill with Linus. Um, and so that concludes my little pee on to Bill. Thanks and love to you for so many wonderful years in crystallography helping us and entertaining us. There's the famous somersault. Yes, we made Bill do this. We were in, at a council meeting. We made him do it and he did it. 
So I want to thank Rao in particular so much for the wonderful invitation to do this. And I want to thank Bill for many stories and for being Bill so we can tell these stories about him. And I want to thank Marsha and Patty. This was at the 96 meeting, actually. I couldn't find any other pictures of them together um, for stories about Bill. And to this wonderful archive at the IUCR of all the newsletters from volume one, number one, and all the photos. There are thousands of photos of all the IUCR meetings and many other information. Go look there, it's amazing. I also want to thank Peter Mueller because he's posted at least eight years worth of ACA photos online and to some of my own and, and colleagues' photos. So, thanks Bill. Wonderful. Thank you, Sue, for the wonderful talk. Actually, in one of the council meetings, I asked Sue whether she was coming to India, and she said, no, I'm not coming because I cannot get funded by broker. I said, well, I am organizing a symposium. Why don't you be a speaker? I will send you the invitation. And I sent it, and she got it, and she's here. <laughs> Thank you very much. Our next speaker is Dr. Claude Lacomte talking on build reacts and the emerging countries. Thank you, Rao, for this very nice invitation to speak. My experience with Bill. In fact, I changed a little my title. It will be my interactions. Oh, I do not know him by heart. My interactions with Bill, an opportunity to realize an old dream. <coughs> The first time I saw Bill's name when we had, well, when, was when I was finishing my thèse de troisième sic in French, master, t, master degree, when I was reading his paper with, on crystal structure and molecular conformation of aldosterone and val valinomycin determination by direct methods. The, opi the opinion of the little French crystallographer finishing the thèse de troisième sic was, William Duax is a great researcher publishing with Prof. Hauptmann. <laughs> At that time, I was, I was learning the direct methods. The first time I saw Bill, it was in 80, 81, during my postdoctoral stay with Philip Coppens. I was invited for a talk at the Medical Foundation. My talk was so interesting that <laughs> Professor David Harker slept and fell from his chair. <laughs> And then after we met, we had many times together. But I, at that time, I'd very, I had very, very few interactions with Bill. I felt him as somebody always running everywhere, who never took time to discuss with friendship like me. But he was a very important person at the Medical Foundation, and I didn't dare to approach him. That was the way we, we French PhD students, were behaving with our professors at that time. So there was a very, very big gap between a small student or even a postdoc and a big professor, even if the professor was not so big, in fact. <laughs> so my second postdoc with Philippe was in 83, and then I began intense work with Bob Blessing, who began, began also an excellent friend, but still very few interaction with Bill. And from 85 to 84, almost each year, I was spending some time with Bob, working with him, on his NIH ground and charge density on biophosphate. We had some polite interaction with Bill, but nothing more. We were work, not working in the same area of crystallography. <coughs> At that time, Bill was working on synthesis and characterization of some uh, estradiols, etc. But you can make a remark. I never saw an Actacris paper at that time. He published everywhere, but not in Acta Christ. <laughs> <laughs> but in 2004, everything changed. Bill is president of the IUCR. Bill did pave the route to promote crystallography in emerging countries. I am sure of that. He was one of the first IUCR presidents. 
to understand the role of the Union for emerging countries. He went during his term everywhere during his presidency, trying to promote science and crystallography in emerging countries, and even remote ones. So I began to think maybe this person is not too bad. <laughs> During that period, I was president of the European Crystallographic Association and contributed to build the, the Moroccan Crystallographic Association and the Algerian Crystallography Association with my North African colleagues and organizing, organizing also schools. So I then invited Bill, President Bill, to North Africa. And in fact, he Came with, with, he came to the El, Jad El Jadida School, organized, organized in 2004, which was a course de crystallography for mostly Moroccan students, crystallography and X-ray diffraction. Here are some of the pictures we had at that time, the opening ceremony on your left, where you see Bill, who had a nice dinner together, and Bill and Tris Dakaria, who was the chair of the school. It was a very, very good time we had together. Here was so there were here the professor and doctors who were teaching, and Bill already at that time gave a very nice talk about crystallography and Nobel Prize. And during this school, I was really impressed by Bill's humanity and his idea to promote crystallography in emerging countries, also, mostly, and also by his great courage. It was a very bad time where Bush was president, Bush Jr. And Bill gave a fantastic speech about what he was deeply and warmly, warmly thinking, showing that our North African, to showing to our, to our North African colleagues that many, many Americans are good guys and do not be, behave like, like Bush. I will re remember his speech all my life. It was a very, very moving speech. And finally, we began to really discuss together and concluded that we have almost the same wishes and views and will to develop science in Africa. In 2006, I am a candidate to IUCR execu Executive Committee. I am eliminate, eliminate, eliminated for the six-year term. And we then were two guys to compete for a three-year term. Same, and we got the same number of votes. So who had to decide? The IUCR rules asked the president to decide who should be elected. I think Bill was very embarrassed, if I remember that also. But Bill decided I was the right person explaining my role in, his, in European Crystallography Association to promote North Africa crystallography. And this decision allowed me to propose to the executive committee the Africa Initiative, and then I was able to begin to realize my dream, promoting crystallography in sub-Saharan countries. Many thanks, Bill. And then I will speak a little about the Africa Initiative, for, for those of you who do not know what it is, which has been built a uh, long time ago, but which is really now operating very well, building school, open labs, creation of crystallography center in, in sub-Saharan Africa, and also the Pan-African crystallography meeting, which were already this shown uh, for the previous speaker. And also, for that, it's, it's, all this Africa initiative would have not have been possible if we have no partner, partnership with diffractometer companies, mostly Brucker now, and UNESCO since 2012, and ICSU, since 2014. At that time also, Bill, you, you still were very, very enthusiastic about research and working mostly on evolution, genetics. You tried many times to explain me <laughs> often. It was very often after some beers, I have to say. <laughs> but uh, it was without success. <laughs> so what is an open lab which was built thanks to Bill at the beginning? In fact, we have two types of open labs. It's a, the, either the type one is a, we, we have portable diffractometer or new installation of second-hand diffractometer, which are operating in 
uh, hubs selected in Africa, for example, or in Asia, or in Latin America, and to make uh, courses and enhance activities. So we had uh, many, many, uh, and, uh, many, many open labs like uh, uh, Morocco, PCCR, one in, in uh, Cameroon, Algeria, Ghana, etc., etc. Here is, for example, the first open lab in Sub-Saharan in Sub Africa, in Zikenshaw, Senegal, two years ago. So you see the open lab concept has been defined by UNESCO and myself in 2013 as one of the most important projects of the International Year of Crystallography. To achieve this goal, a strong collaboration has been built between IUCR, UNESCO, and Brooker Company, and some other com companies after. Brooker temporarily gives for free portable diffractometer to a university, African university, for example. The teachers from the school are from Africa, European university, most often, or from large facility, from Brooker Company, and from Cambridge Structural Data. So you see, for example, here, oops, Florence Porcher, one of my co-workers in, in, Par in Paris, here, who is pre preparing a powder, a powder to make a diffraction pattern with the broker powder diffraction. And then you see her mounting the sample to the diffractometer. Everybody here on this end. That was the end of this uh, open lab. And the first, this first sub-Saharan traveling laboratory, which is called also uh, open lab, confirms that the traveling concept is much superior than the usual school of, of, of uh, crystallography. This is generalized now over the whole Africa continent and emerging countries in Asia and Latin America. And to be more efficient, sure, we are trying to get more collaboration with other companies. Another thing which we were able to do, thanks to, to Bill at the beginning, is to create real crystallography center in Central and Western Africa. The, most of the work is done thanks to the collaboration and partnership between IUCR, UNESCO, and Brooker Company. So what we do, we will make installation of second-hand diffractometers in selected university, where there is some, already some crystallography education. Brooker gives the diffractometer. IUCR, UNESCO, sponsors the shipping and the hand-on school around the diffractometer. The university must be responsible to prepare the room for installation, water, electric, electricity, stability, electrical stability, etc. And also should, I would say, must open a crystallography position if that one does not exist. And it works very well, for example, in Chang in Cameroon, where, in fact, we installed the first powder diffractometer, which is still working now. It was in 2000. 14, if I remember, and they have already published many papers using this diffractometer. And this installation allowed Patrice Kenfak, who organized uh, the Pan-African meeting, to get a crystallographic position at this university. So we have, the, we have the material and also we have the position. And very soon, at Oufouet Bruni University in Côte d'Ivoire, Ivory Coast, a single crystal equipped with low temperature and powder diffractometers and also it allows us to really organize the first Pan-African meeting, I'd say in science, it was in crystallography, but it was really the first Pan-African meeting in science in Chang, in Cameroon, where Bill participated. I have some good souvenir also, where sometimes you were a little lost, Bill. <laughs> it was really, really very, very nice. And so this, this Pan-African meeting was 200 participants, 20, 20 African countries, and that was something really, really, really special. Everybody enjoyed very much that. And thanks to you, Bill, because without your decision so long time ago, nothing would happen. And many thanks also for the organizer, Patrick Skenfak, and Ignace Tonnet. This Pan African was very important also because promoting crystallography, promoting a co collaboration between African and university and international union. But another point very important, we began to bring a roadmap for the African Crystallography Association. 
And the next conference for PCCR2, I invited all of you to this conference, will be in Ghana in February 2019, which will be a conference and also an open, an open lab before and after this conference and during. We expect 300 colleagues. We want to have 30 African countries. And I have the email. And you can discuss also with Professor Robert Adabo or David Dodo, who are here uh, in, the, in the meeting. Oops. So, Cherville. Dear Bill. Cherville, in French, I, I prefer to say Cherville. <laughs> Cherville, all these successes to promote crystallography in Africa would not, not, would not have been if you did not nominate me as an executive committee member and believe in my capabilities to partly realize our, realize our common dream. I thank you very much and all my African colleagues and friends, sorry for the misspelling, join me to thank you very, very much. Thank you very much, Bill. <laughs> Nothing would have stopped you from doing what you've done in Africa. <laughs> Giving me any credit is greatly appreciated, but you were working in Africa long before I made any remarks or did anything. It was because I knew what you were doing that I knew who was the right person to choose. You made it easy for me to make a difficult choice, but you did all this and nothing that I, I had very little to do with it. Thank you. But thank you too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Claude, for the wonderful talk. The next speaker is from Venezuela. Everybody knows her, Dr. Gracia Locke. She is going to talk about Bill Duax in Latin America, emerging Latin American students, and young scientists in crystallography. Well, thank you very much, uh, Rao, for um, inviting me to speak. In this, uh, in this session and uh, to say a few things, very, very few, few things, and that's why I call it a brief account of, uh, of uh, the travels, uh, of some of the travels that uh, Bill, did, uh, Bill did in Latin America. I certainly appreciate the opportunity to, to be here. Okay, I have to say that, that I removed uh, many pictures because my husband, Miguel, made me it. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, I'm just uh, I'm kidding. <laughs> well, you know that I'm not kidding. <laughs> no, um, well, uh, just to um, briefly introduce where I come from. Uh, well, here's Venezuela. We are actually very close to to the U.S. and um, uh, this is uh, the South American map. I'm from Venezuela, but I, I usually people ask me if I live in Caracas. I don't live there in the capital. I live uh, about here in Merida, which is, I think, a very nice city. Uh, and I'm sure I am from Maracaibo. Miguel is from uh, the Plains areas, but we went to study in Merida, and we love the, the place, and uh, we liked it very much. This is a view of the city. This is actually a, the uh, airport that was used at the, the time that Bill went to Merida for the first time. It was in the middle of the of the city, and it was quite an experience to land there and also to to um, take off from that uh, from that uh, airport. This is the main uh, uh, garden of the university that leads to the uh, aula magna, where uh, the graduation ceremonies take place, and uh, this is uh, a view of our campus. Uh, we have um, mountains covered with snow. It's uh, pretty much all, real, all year round. So this, this is a very, very nice setting. So when we were uh, graduate students, my husband at MIT and I was at Brandeis University between 1982 and 98, Miguel had the opportunity to attend the ACA meeting in Austin, Texas in 1987. And he came back very, very happy. He said I, he had met um, a lot of the very fine crystallographers that he never thought that he would be able to meet them in, in, such a, in such a setting, and he was really, really happy. And then he said that he met a guy um, that he was very enthusiastic about crystallography. He was a very nice guy, but he said, 
I think he's really crazy, but he's such a nice person. <laughs> he's so enthusiastic. He danced. There was mariachis here. Uh, he danced here. He, would, he was telling me, well, he was always wearing this shirts and sandals. I, I think he's really crazy, but I, I liked him because he's so enthusiastic about uh, crystallography. Uh, <laughs> the, he was able to, to take a picture, I don't know, if you were dancing or... <laughs> dancing like a cucaracha. <laughs> yeah, a cucaracha probably. <laughs> so um, he was really happy and um, as soon as we graduated in 1988, I went back to Venezuela and we were um, given the opportunity to organize the uh, one of the Ibero-American meetings and the first school uh, on crystallography in Merida. We thought, uh, this is the guy. We have to get in touch with him and uh, keep um, uh, asking him to help us organize this meeting. Uh, we attended the first uh, IUCR Congress uh, in 1990 in Bordeaux, and this is Miguel uh, by his poster talking to, um, to Bill. Uh, we had already made the arrangements. Bill was instrumental in having a Herb Hauptmann, for example, and suggesting other people that uh, could be with us in the first Ibero-American meeting in 1990, and we were pretty much um, fine-tuning some details of the meeting at, at the meeting in Bordeaux. So we had, we had, I think we had a very successful meeting. Uh, you can recognize some people here. For example, here is Fernando Laos. Fernando is there. <laughs> um, we had the participation of uh, George Bill, Bob Snyder, Bernie Winch, uh, Herb Hauptmann, Angel Vegas from Spain, Javier uh, Isern, a Venezuelan crystallographer who is, uh, has been in the US for, since he graduated, Bruce Foxman, and the founders, the two founders of our group, uh, Professor Eldris and Valentina here. You can see here uh, Bill in the, in the back. And uh, some young crystallographers at the time that we think that this course was very instrumental in having a, uh, a to helping us project crystallography from Merida to South America and also from South America to different uh, to other countries. Here are the, the speakers, uh, invited speakers to that course. Uh, and you can also recognize here some uh, Latin American figures. This is Jose Antonio Nao from Colombia. Uh, this is one of our colleagues, Belkis Ramirez. This is uh, Daniel Vega from Argentina. This is Lauro Bucio, who is also here in the audience. He was in the audience a minute ago. Oh, there he is. And uh, so we think that um, that it was a very successful meeting. We also realized that Bill liked to take pictures of uh, everybody, and we also were very impressed when he did somersaults in one of the, <laughs> in, the <laughs> in one of the sessions. And we thought uh, that yeah, he was really, really quite a nice guy. Um, this is uh, a picture of the opening ceremonies. Here's uh, Herb uh, with the secretary of the university at that time, and one of the fine. Uh, guitar players in Venezuela who gave a concert. And we had the opportunity to, to meet um, her and, um, and also go around uh, Merida. As I mentioned, it's a very nice city. Here are some pictures of Bill in one theme park that uh, I, don't, I don't know if you remember these, Bill. <laughs> but uh, we visited some places uh, nearby. Uh, I think he felt at home, actually. Uh, as usual, he was very, very, um, uh, he, he got very uh, close to his people. This guy was the, um, uh, the person in charge of maintenance for the building, for the science building, and uh, he got pretty along pretty well with Bill, even though he didn't speak English and Bill didn't <laughs> speak any, any Spanish at all. <laughs> so um, we enjoyed very much, uh, very much his visit. Uh, that also, uh, mm, help us uh, organize, and actually we had uh, a very, um, very successful sort of a series of courses. Bill and Herb came back in 1994, along with uh, Chuck Strauss and uh, David Brown is here, uh, was here as an invited speaker. We had a very interesting uh, meeting uh, in 1994, also school. And also, I should have pointed out that 
some of the people here. This is Estela uh, Roque from Cuba, one of our students. And um, some of our students were very young at that time, and now they are in very good positions in Venezuela and in Latin America. This is one of, um, of the pictures. Bill, uh, listening to one of the talks, uh, I don't know who was uh, speaking at the time, with David Brown, Herb, and with Edie Huffman. And uh, we have been always very, very um, uh, glad for the opportunity that uh, we had to meet such fine people, such fine crystallographers. Uh, and here is a picture of um, my colleague Bill Belkis. I was very young at that time, and uh, and Herb uh, here in this picture. So we we have been always um, in debt to Bill because uh, we have met uh, fine crystallographers, but even better, better people. Um, as I mentioned, uh, I think with the with the uh, impulse that we got from the first courses where Bill attended, we were able to have um, uh, strong collaboration with other groups, and uh, we had a very intense uh, activity organizing different uh, different courses. This is another course, for example, with uh, Bob Snyder, uh, also a very good friend, and Daniel Luer, and uh, other. Um, very good speakers. Uh, Bill went, uh, the last time that he went to Venezuela, he went uh, in 2004, we had a meeting in the, the uh, institute, uh, research institute in Caracas at IVIC. Um, at that time, some of my former graduate students were, uh, uh, started to work in this, uh, in this institute, so they, uh, in some way, they um, uh, moved and helped uh, Bill crystallography in other places in Venezuela. Uh, also, I mean, we were able to attract uh, other very fine scientists and uh, uh, carry out some other courses. And uh, I think because we had, uh, we got some, a little bit of a good reputation, we were able also to uh, have uh, another Nobel Prize uh, in chemistry uh, for the International Year of Chemistry in 2011. Um, uh, Roll Hoffman, who I met in one of the ACA meetings, also. The royal for crystallography. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, through the throughout the years, I have uh, seen Bill in different uh, meetings. This was at the ACA meeting, I think, in 1995 in Pittsburgh, and 2005. Sometimes with uh, well, very fine people. Some of my students that we have um, taken. But uh, one of the things that I wanted to to mention is that uh, where some of those guys who went to the Ibero-American meeting in 1990 are now, or what are they doing today? For example, Daniel Vega has been very, very uh, active in the Argentinian Association of Crystallography. He um, is one of them. He has been a president of the association and has a very strong activity in the teaching courses. And um, for example, well, we has also fostered collaboration with uh, uh, with us and with uh, other people from Latin America. This is a picture of that course. Miguel uh, was invited to teach there. This is Daniel right now, Daniel Vega. And these are some of the uh, views of the students at that course. This is one of the more recent ones. Here is Daniel also um, keeping up uh, with the tradition and uh, we consider him a very, very good friend and a fine crystallographer. Uh, Jose Antonio now, our friend from Colombia, uh, we have been collaborating with him uh, recently. Uh, he has a very, very nice laboratory and uh, we had the opportunity to participate uh, in a Rigaku Open Lab that we con uh, organized in conjunction with uh, Jose Antonio and his lab in, uh, as part of the International Geo of Crystallography uh, activities. <coughs> We had students from Colombia, Venezuela, Bolivia, young scientists from Costa Rica, and um, we have um, we have uh, uh, continued the collaboration. And uh, I, I would say this is one of the seeds of that uh, course that we had in 1990. Uh, this is Jose Antonio in his lab at part of, uh, during the open lab in in Colombia. Uh, we had the visit of uh, very, very top uh, people from the Ministry of Science in Colombia, and they were very, uh, 
very glad to see that uh, there was a strong collaboration between our labs, that we had such an intense activity and that we had that open lab. That was very um, important for them and very important for Jose Antonio to keep his lab going. This is in a recent visit. Um, I was there with one of my students and this is part of uh, the group that uh, Jose Antonio has in Colombia. And Robert, for example, was a uh, PhD student of us and now he's a postdoc in Jose Antonio's lab. And uh, let's see, uh, well, and Lauro, uh, as I mentioned, is here. Lauro has been very active in the Mexican Crystallographic Association. He has been in the executive board of that uh, association, I think, since the beginning. He's very active, he's a very um, fine professor. I found this uh, uh, from a web page, and I'm going to translate what the student says. This, this is a page where the students grade the, the professors, and they said, they said, even though I don't like physics, and I really didn't have a good background, I learned a lot with him, and he made me interested uh, in the class. Sometimes he is a little bit stressed because the students do not understand, <laughs> but he's not rude. If you really want to learn, he is the option, and uh, that's something not difficult to do. So I think um, I wanted to point out where some of these uh, people are and what they have been doing right now. Well, Bill participated in the meeting, uh, in a very important meeting where we uh, finally <laughs> where we finally set up, uh, founded the Latin American Crystallographic Association. This was a meeting in Cordoba in Argentina in 2013. As usual, he gave a very interesting talk, very <laughs> engaging talk. And uh, he reminded us, uh, well, the future of crystallography is in your hands, in our hands. And he was, um, we, we were happy to see that all the effort that Bill um, put into helping us uh, build the uh, Latin American Crystallographic Association finally crystallized uh, in this. Uh, and now you have seen uh, that we are a regional associate and we are, um, uh, we are working really hard in keeping um, our uh, association, our regional associate uh, growing. Uh, Bill takes the time to talk to students and uh, get them interested in crystallography. His program is uh, really, uh, uh, we have seen the, the results that he has presented and as he keeps talking, he gets more and more enthusiastic and very, very intense about it. It's really nice to see him uh, uh, do that. Uh, he's uh, loved by children. <laughs> and uh, remember Daniela? <laughs> this is my daughter. <laughs> He's loved by children. These are my kids in the Seattle meeting uh, with Bill, and um, they had a good time uh, talking to him and probably giving him trouble. I don't know. <laughs> so um, where am I? I mean, I talk where some people are, but uh, uh, right now, well, I thanks to Bill encourage encouragement uh, to work in crystallography and. Uh, keep it going <laughs> in spite of the difficult uh, situations and hardships. Well, I'm very glad that now I am at least a candidate uh, for the executive committee. I could not have done that without your encouragement, uh, not only because I'm a lady, also because I'm a crystallographer from Latin America. And uh, I- Good sign. <laughs> and I really thank you for, for your encouragement uh, and for the support to our community. Yeah. Thank you, Graciela. <clears throat> when first Mike Dacombe asked me to organize this symposium, I was wondering where I'm going to get the speakers. <laughs> then I decided to go ahead and I wanted to invite people from different countries give equal opportunity for minorities and women, and I gathered up a group. I called these people and no one said no. They said, Bill, oh, we will come and talk. So I'm so happy about that. The first one was Dr. Cloud Lacomte. He said, I'll be more than happy to talk. <laughs> Thank you. The next is Dr. Hannah Debraska from Canada. So. So now, when you, I think everybody can hear me well. So 
So now when I started to work on this, I, I'm thinking, oh my God, I can only see, say good things about Bill. Uh, there is nothing which good can go wrong at all. So then I remembered from long time education at high school that there is this kind of crazy uh, genre of uh, literature, classical literature, which is called panegyric. Panegyric is uh, aimed at kings, at presidents, at uh, big leaders, and for CEO of American Crystallographic Association. So here is my panegyric for Bill. Uh, I met Bill first at UCL Congress in Florence in 2005. There, and later in Osaka, he was the face of the Congress. He was always running around, entering the sessions, taking pictures, always very active, very enthusiastic, going with his camera, collecting pictures of speakers, chairs of the sessions, visitors, poster presenters, everybody, and all of us who were there enjoying this meeting. Later, these pictures appeared in the newsletter and they were admi with admiration discussed at many scientific coffee tables. Uh, I'm sure you all remember going through this new version of the EUCR newsletters and discussing who looks how on which picture. No wonder he knows so much about the history of both EUCR and ACA. And he calmly intervenes when new leaders are trying to repeat the mistakes which, is, which were already done before. <laughs> the number of his students is very high. They belong to countries around the world. Either because he volunteered to many organizations and to, to teach at the crystallography without borders, or because he invited the students to work in his lab. I was under the impression that if I am the speaker number six, there is no need to prepare pictures and there is no need to, uh, to, to talk about the details of his international collaboration. But uh, if, you, if you go into Google, and if you Google Bill Duak's images, there is incredible choice of pictures of him with the important people, with the students, with his colleagues in different uh, time of his life. And I was quite displeased that there is no movie of his uh, cartwheel, <laughs> somersault. I'm very glad that, <laughs> that you took this, this video. He's a very strong supporter of women at all stages of their careers. And in all the possible roles, as scientist, but not only as scientist. He's always very encouraging, very patient, explaining science and life during the poster sessions and on the holidays. We spent half an hour talking uh, recently, uh, chatting recently on the holidays. He always has time to answer questions and offer the advice, but only when he is asked for the advice. His interaction with high school students, who he termed scientists, led to good scientific publications and was mentioned and were, and were mentioned many times at local newspapers and beyond this. It is enormous pleasure to work and learn from Bill Dwax. Not only crystallography, but also his extremely positive way of life looking at the world. I hope he will stay my mentor for many years to come. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I didn't say that he had Dr. Honoris Causa in Polish, uni from Polish University. I thought somebody else will say about this. <laughs> Thank you, Hannah. The next speaker is Dr. Ven Murugan from India. He worked as a postdoctoral fellow in the Medical Research Foundation of Buffalo. Thank you. So good evening. I come from Center of Advanced Study in Crystallography and Biophysics, the laboratory founded by late Professor G. Ramachandran, the father of structural biology in the year 1952. I met uh, Duax 34 years back in 1983 when Professor Hoffman organized a uh, school on direct methods. So, in, I come from Chennai, and there's a famous hero in our place called Rajini Gant. So there's a famous movie called Basha. So I will just translate. <laughs> Rajini was a he hero, 
and there's a hero his name is Nakma. So there's a song on the beauty of Rajinikan, the way he dresses, the way he laughs and like that. So you know, I'm, I don't consider myself a heroine, but I consider it Bill Duarte as a hero. Because I used to enjoy, during the four years of his stay in Buffalo, the way he dresses and the way he laughs, as most of you have seen, and importantly, the way he walks. The fastest walker in medical problem in Buffalo is Bill Duarte. But by hearing the sound, tuck, 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 you know who is crossing. And in no time you'll be in some, somebody's room, we don't know. So such as a dynamic personality. And as somebody has pointed out, I attended many conferences in which uh, Bill Duax has participated. To my surprise, this is the only international conference where I do not find Bill Duax without a camera hanging on his neck. This is the first conference I have seen. <laughs> many AC music. such a dynamic and active uh, personality. And most of the people, they didn't uh, go through his uh, theoretical work. Being a theoretician, I worked with the Hartman. Uh, first, I want to cite the preface written by Hartman in 1972 in the textbook, The Role of Cosine Seminvariants, published by Plenum Press. He says, it is now the author's present task to make grateful acknowledgement of his indebtedness to a number of people without whose help and cooperation this book could not have been written. Foremost among these are doctors William Duax and Chuck Weeks, who have not only shown great resourcefulness in making the initial applications, but have suggested novel approaches, particularly in the applications which have often in turn led to further theoretical advances. They have generously permitted the author, I mean Hoffman, to include in this book a number of questions such as determinations not previously published. The author is still further in depth. And he praises a lot. That's one thing. Then coming to 1972, where the first automation came from a University of York, England, and the program Malta. That day itself, uh, Professor Duax has published a very nice paper, Hoffman and Duax, on one dimensional phases in phase group P2121. <laughs> you must have forgotten. A very good paper. And most of the people, they do not read those pioneering papers because now automation, press the button, get the structure. No. But I, whenever I do a lecture or theory and practice of direct methods, I used to explain, I used to honor those people who suffered a lot. It's been a very interesting paper. I, I, I usually read a square tangent formula application and so on. Another interesting paper I found in, as Duarte's contribution is the crystal such a determination of valinomycin by direct method again in 1970. Some people said Duarte didn't publish an act of Christo, but fortunately uh, these two are from act of Christo only in 1972. And this was in 1972, well, And not only that, in the theory and practice of direct methods book published by Lennon Palmer, so you have written a very good chapter, application of cosine, calculated cosine invariance in phase determination. I am there as a person who appreciates because most of the become structural crystallographer, macromolecular crystallographer, but I have this chapter and I used to teach to the students. And I am happy to tell you that I was uh, at Medical Foundation of Buffalo in two great occasions. Uh, first is uh, when uh, Dr. Duax, uh, through the collaboration with Dr. David Lance. So that group has solved the uncompressed diamond structure in 1987. So we had a party also. And again, on another occasion, I was there, where, along with uh, Devashish Ghosh, so they found the steroid decay in the structure also. I was there at that time. And most importantly, I have enjoyed three very good parties. Supposed to be Bill <laughs> Duax at home. You know when Bill Duax goes to party, how, how high level it be. So we, we, I cannot forget and the enjoyment I have. And whenever, uh, we, we still continue doing small molecular crystallography. Whenever we talk about asymmetry parameters, Duax goes along with it. So nobody can forget his contribution, which uh, has received so many citations. And now, she has spent about 10 minutes now in the uh, morning to talk with me and how he promotes this uh, evolution and bioinformatics and those things to school kids, which is very good service uh, to a society, scientific society. And uh, I wish you good luck, long and healthy life, scientific life. Thank you so much. I hope that was not enough for giving me an opportunity to share my feelings with you.